Well, let me tell you, Americans do some really stupid things, but so do Europeans and others. And you'll see the aerial spraying in London, Paris, Geneva, and uh, in Egypt, in Luxor, and all over the world. This is a concerted, a concerted effort. So you have to ask the question, what are they spraying? Imagine, imagine if you decided to do this and you decided to grind up tea leaves and spray the powdered tea leaves into the atmosphere. Well, you could figure out what they were doing by taking a look at the rain and seeing that the rain had, had dissolved some chemicals that matched the chemicals in tea. Also Hypothetisch, oder wenn jemand äh, Teeblätter zermahlen würde und verspritzen würde am Himmel, wäre es ja kein Problem für die Wissenschaft, dann im Regen zu gucken, was runterkommt und es zu analysieren und sagen, okay, es sind Teeblätter, oder? Ja, einfach. You, you could also capture snow, the first snow that fell after the spraying, because the snow would bring down the tea particles. Gleiche gilt für Schnee. And then you analyze the residue or the residue of snow mold where it's under, under the snow in some places where the particles would come off of the snow and get stuck on the snow mold. And then compare that to the chemical composition of the tea. Well, they're not spraying tea. What they're spraying is coal fly ash. And that's what I was comparing it to. Coal fly ash, there's good data about what elements come out when it's exposed to water. Okay. So, also, was da oben gespritzt wird, nennt er coal fly ash. Ja, ash is asche, coal is kohle. And fly is das, was eben schwebt für eine Weile. Ich weiß nicht, wie man es übersetzt auf Deutsch. When, when coal is burned by electric in, uh, utilities, for example, the heavy ash settles the coal fly ash forms in the hot gases above the burner as tiny particles, mostly spheres or composite spheres. Okay, um, also, uh, er sagt das Beispiel, dass man versteht, wie das zustande kommt. Wenn man Kohle verbrennt in Kohlekraftwerken, gibt es einen Teil, der nach unten fällt und ein Teil von diesen Feinstaubschwebeteilchen, uh, die, die sich von der Kohle her bilden und das ist diese coal fly ash. Now in Western nations, the coal fly ash is trapped electrostatically by, by law because it's so toxic. So it's, it's the, maybe the second largest industrial waste product globally. And it forms in just the size that would be convenient for spraying into the atmosphere. And in 2014, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency ruled that coal fly ash is not a toxic waste, it's a solid waste that can be dumped in landfills and rivers. Why would they do that? Yeah, in 2014 had the American Gesundheitsbehörde the Gesetzeslage verändert and gesagt, plötzlich is dieser stuff nicht mehr schädlich, sondern darf in also in Müllgruben and so und das in the Erde gegeben werden ohne Problem. Well, I think the reason is so that the U.S. Air Force and its contractors and the NATO and who knows who else can't be accused of spraying toxic waste into the air. But a regulation doesn't change. This is a toxic nightmare. Good. And, and er sagt eben, and the Grund natürlich, warum die Gesetzeslage da verändert wurde, ist, damit das Militär später nicht angeklagt werden darf, dass sie was Toxisches am Himmel verspritzen wird. Wenn die Erde nicht mehr toxisch ist, plötzlich seit 2014, kann man es ja überall verwenden. And you can see there's a whole host of, of elements in there 
that are detrimental to life. Mercury, for example, chromium-6, arsenic, I mean, it goes on and on. This is the list uh, here, here rechts is the long list of toxic metals that are harmful for our health. It started from aluminum, arsen, uh, then uh, I mean the chrome 6, this is this, uh, this uh, film with Julia Roberts, the chrome 6, that you have seen, how do you say it in Deutsch? Has it the Oscar for the film? Aaron Brockovich, this was chrome 6, yeah. Und das ist auch mit drin. Hochgradig krebserregend. 